Hi everyone, so the purpose of this video that I'm going to show you now is just to give you some thoughts and ideas for planning your ceremony. This is an exciting day and um, you've, there's a, been a lot of planning behind the scenes. You've invited your guests, you've told everyone about it and um, I thought I'd make a video because a lot of the couples that I help kind of don't know where to start and only when we start engaging do they actually get time to think about what they want to do and um, with this video you can kind of watch in your own time play and rewind and skip to specific stages that you really want to just zone in on and uh, these are all just thoughts and ideas you know obviously I've been helping marrying couples since 2003 uh, it's been a while, yeah, over 400 couples and really trust that some of these thoughts and ideas will help you and uh, really just to get the ball rolling and please, these are just my ideas, there's nothing set in stone, at the end of the day you can do what you want. So just first some general thoughts and comments, the first thing I want to say is you want to make it memorable. Um, your wedding day is an important day, it's one of the, probably one of the highlights of every single person's life is the day they get married and my encouragement to you is really to make it memorable and remember you can do what you want on your wedding day there are no hard and fast rules the only two things I've got to say by law is to ask if there's anyone that has any lawful impediment why you can't get married and then to declare you both as husband and wife so other than that do what you want you know create a memory do something different let people walk away from your wedding saying, wow, that's just the way we know them. Or, sure, that was amazing, it was different and it was wonderful. So those would be my thoughts and ideas and encouragements for you guys is to make it memorable, do what you want, make it a little different, all right? On the day, um, you want people to kind of celebrate your your wedding. That That's what it's all about. So it's little things really planning, strategizing, doing little things that at the end of the day you guys feel happy and say, John, that's who we are. Let's go ahead with this or that. All right. Um, on the day, I want you guys to enjoy your wedding. Please don't stress. All right. Enjoy every moment. I'll be there on time. I'll be early. We'll go through all of that just now. Some of the things I do before the ceremony. But you need to know I'll be ready. Leave it to me. Trust me. I've done hundreds, 400 plus weddings and all of the people have been extremely happy with the way I've conducted the ceremony. So on the day, you need to know that I'll be ready. We would have chatted and discussed and tweaked and looked at various things and it's what you want. I'll make many suggestions and then I need you to chill and relax and enjoy it. Take in the moment. I'm not going to rush you. And on that point, you need to know when we're looking at the length of the ceremony, for me, what works and the feedback that I get from a lot of couples is that about 25 minutes on average is a great time for the ceremony. Anything longer than half an hour starts to feel long and anything shorter than that starts to feel very short. But that the average time that you're looking at in, in terms of a ceremony that I conduct for you is about half an hour. All right, if you want it longer, I can do it. No, no issues or shorter. Obviously, it just depends. But for your average ceremony, you're looking at about 25 minutes. So one of the things I just want to check with you is, for me, is there a specific dress code? Is there a specific theme? And that's something you want to think about in all your planning. Um, what it does is it sets the atmosphere. Now, you might tell your people, you might be being, getting married on the beach, uh, one of the most interesting dress codes I ever had was a beach wedding and the couple said to everyone to dress formally but with no shoes. Uh, everyone thought it was so strange but on the day you have no idea how absolutely incredibly it looked and it worked. It was fantastic. So yeah, let your guests know how they should dress. It does help um, and obviously you get very formal, very informal. Think of the weather think of the weather conditions. I, <laughs> I once did a, a wedding for a, a couple from France. Uh, it was February and we had planned it for um, in the in France Hook in one of the nice winey states and I think the starting time was about four o'clock. So you can just imagine France Hook in the middle of February four o'clock it was a scorcher. It was a hot hot day and I remember getting to the wedding I was already sweating 
um, and I saw the chairs laid out in the sun. Beautiful green patch, trees around the, this huge green garden, but the chairs were set up in the sun. And I remember saying to myself, these people are going to get too hot. 90% of all the folks were from France, so they'd just come from their winter. Five minutes into the ceremony, the bride nearly fainted. I stopped and I said, folks, would you please lift your chair, take your chair, pick up your chair, and let's move to the shade on the side of the green patch and we can informally sit there and we'll carry on. Of course, the people were so grateful that I did that. But think of the weather, think of the, the dress code, etc. Uh, those are some of the things you want to think about. And then how many people are you expecting? If it's at a typical uh, wedding venue or a wine farm, yeah, you know, you're probably looking at anything from 30 to 80, maybe sometimes 100 people. Is it a small, is it a large wedding? Is it going to be a home wedding? All these things kind of affect the way we plan your ceremony together. Obviously, with the size of the wedding, it can be small but formal. I've had that before where it was 15 people, but it was dress up formal at a restaurant on a side little uh, uh, section of the restaurant that portioned it off. So it just depends. And those are all uh, things you want to think about that actually affect the mood and the atmosphere of your ceremony and your wedding. So before the ceremony, I obviously get there. Typically, most weddings start at four um, to create more time for photos, etc. before sunset. But I'll normally get there half an hour before we start. And one of the things I will do is with the groom, uh, I will collect the photos, the small little passport size photos for the marriage register so to the groom please don't forget those i'll collect those from you on the day what i then do is i look for the table where we'll be signing the marriage register and i'll make sure that's set up nicely uh, so if you are talking to a wedding host or a wedding venue please just ask him just to station a, a table nicely where you want and think of photos etc you want to make it really look nice and you know, think of your photographer and think of those photos. And then I'll definitely touch base with your sound guy or your DJ. I'll check with him on the various songs, uh, the entrance song, the exit song. And is there going to be a confetti song, which we'll talk about now. now. And then is there going to be a microphone? A lot of people play music, but sometimes there's no microphone. My suggestion is as far as possible, ask your sound guy to please prepare a microphone. Unless it's a very small group 15 or 20 people that's a little different if it's outdoors and there are speakers try and include a, a microphone right so on the day um i've got the early and the groom <laughs> you and your groomsman will position ourselves at the front and we're basically waiting for the bride to enter what i will do is to the groom and the groomsman i'll show you where to stand nothing you need to rehearse for that and then just before the bride walks in, I'll probably say, and I'll check with you, but I normally do say it. I say, folks, would you please, just for the ceremony, turn your mobile phones off. We don't want any photos and videos. Um, you might be in the way of the photographer or the videographer in terms of getting the photos and the videos that they want. Now, you can just imagine it. If they're taking photos and the photos are full of other people on their phones trying to take photos, it kind of defeats the object. And my motivation when I announced that would say we'd like you to enjoy the ceremony. However, after the ceremony, after the confetti, go for it. Take as many photos and videos as you want. So there's a couple of things there. I've spoken to so many photographers who, who literally cannot get the shot because people are in the way trying to take photos and videos with their, with their, with their phones. So yeah, we'll chat about that, but I'll generally make that announcement. Right, then to the bride. At some stage, I will see you come in. I might meet you at the back at coming out of your car just to say hi. But I will basically walk back to where everyone's uh, waiting. And I'll say, folks, the bride has arrived. Um, turn your phones off. Then I'll say, when the music starts, would you all please stand? So if no one stands, then I'll normally just say, could we all stand, please? And then the entrance starts. So you would typically... Don't have to, but there would might be flower girls or boys followed by your bridesmaids. And then, um, obviously, uh, timing is everything. I just want to say this. So you guys would have practiced or spoken about each bridesmaid that needs to give five or ten meters between them at all. And the key is not to rush. Think of the music. You know, you guys can obviously practice that on your own if you really want to. 
but you guys come in and then the bride you would then be coming in with whoever's giving you away that might be your father or an uncle or brother or mother or just on your own and uh, we'll talk about some other things you can do but i've actually seen a bride and groom coming together which was wonderful it really worked great both parents from both sides had uh, passed away so they just came in together but you would come in now picture this bride you and the person who's coming in with you walk all the way down the aisle till you reach the first row of chairs so it's not quite where we're waiting for you in the front but it's that first row of chairs then let the music play remember no one's rushing you enjoy the moment uh you know and we you will we'll go over this you know and um, i'll just check it out if it feels very early in the song i might let the song play out a bit but at some stage i will then say who gives this bride today in marriage and the person who's brought you in whether that's your father or uncle or brother or mother would then say i do and at that point uh, i will just say thank you and then bride you and that person greet each other exchange some words if you want to give a hug or a, 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 a you know check on the, a, a peck on the cheek however you want you know keep it real uh, my encouragement if you're coming in with your father is to exchange some pleasantries you know say hey dad love you thanks for everything this is a special day and i wouldn't be here without you something like that you know make it memorable make it special remember it's also tough for some fathers to give their bride away right then um at that point the groom you need to move over and shake that person's hand or give them a hug uh, however you want to greet that person and it's really just saying the father or the or the person who's bringing in the bride saying hey man i'm handing this my beautiful daughter to you uh, look after her etc um shake their hand and that person would then go and sit down then i will say to the two of you just greet each other however you want you know obviously you don't want to give give each other a full on kiss but uh, keep it real if you hug each other peck each other on the cheek or whatever you look nice you know don't be awkward it's it's your wedding you guys greet each other the way you want and then i'll say um let's just say uh, uh Michael and Michelle would you please step forward or i think you'd step forward and then what i'm going to do is depending on how nervous you both might look or how many tears are being shed etc i might say could we please give Michael and Michelle a hand clap you know sometimes that breaks the ice and sometimes it's a good thing i've seen that happen many times so i'll gauge the situation and then i'll if it's a semi or a religious wedding i'll say let's open in prayer while everyone's standing the prayer would literally be lord we thank you for Michael and Michelle we thank you for who they are we thank you for the incredible couple that they are together we believe that it's you that's brought them together we ask you for your blessing upon the the marriage but also upon this beautiful day their wedding amen and then everyone will sit um at that point you would obviously have arranged whether your bridesmaids or groomsmen are going to sit or stand with you throughout the ceremony now what I'll do is I'll again just welcome everyone and say it's amazing I might comment on how amazing you both look and then I'll start with and this is an option but it's something that I like to do because it really does make such an impact I'll start with the story of Michael and Michelle started like this and I'm going to ask you to email me something whatever you send me how short or how long is what I'm going to read and I'll tell you why firstly it sets uh it, it sets the atmosphere but it also takes everyone down memory lane so it's a kind of a, a reminder and i'll literally say folks we're going to take a small trip down memory lane and we're going to we're going to think about how michael and michelle met each other so the story of michael and michelle started like this and i'll read it so what it does is it helps everyone to remember how you met and that uh maybe mention some funny and some serious parts to your little story um you know i've seen couples cry even just mentioning how you met i've seen moms cry i've i've heard people chirp from your from your wedding wedding party yeah we knew it we knew it all along or whatever you know small little things that at the end of the day it really does set such a fantastic tone for the whole day um and and for me it's got to be authentic because then it's also i know something about you guys and obviously by the time i do your wedding we friends you know we've kind of chatted a lot and um you yeah, know for me that's authentic you know i don't want the guys to feel like oh, where did you guys find this 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 pastor this marriage officer he doesn't know you 
But that for me is important, you know. Um, be careful of overshare. I remember reading through the one story that the, the bride sent me and uh, kind of something looked a little odd and I, I emailed them back together and I said, listen, that one little statement, do you really want me to share that? And the groom was like insistent saying, no, we don't, that's a little too much to share. And then she agreed. So just be careful of overshare, but obviously uh, stick to the highlights, stick to some a small little funny and serious parts to your story. Then after that, I'm going to share a message of some sort. It's not going to be long, probably five to 10 minutes, just depends on, on how long. Normally it's about seven or eight minutes. Um, here are some titles of messages that I've shared um, and they all are different, but they work so, so, so well. There's one called Best Friends, Best Lovers. And what I do with that is I speak about the aspect of friendship and how that friendship has grown to what is a love relationship between the two of you. But going into your marriage, how this friendship will grow. And I, I really zone in on what best friends are. And it really is such an amazing short message. It's, it's probably one of my favorites. The second one is seven keys for a great marriage. Uh, there's nothing there that I mentioned that you haven't heard before, but it's going to be love, respect. And uh, I speak about communication, throw one or two funny funny comments in on that one. Uh, it's it's different, but it also it's very, very impactful. Then there's another one. If you have, if you want a, a religious ceremony that specifically speaks about how God created Eve for Adam, then this one, the two, two is better than one. I speak about how the two of you are better than one. We we see it in team sports, we see it in business, and we see it also in marriage. Two is better than one, and I speak about this incredible partnership and. You know, two people are just always, always better than one, especially within the within within the bounds of marriage. And then there's another interesting one that I've put together called uh, "All We Need Is Love." Now we all remember that uh, that Beatles song, "All We Need Is Love." Da, 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 da. So I, I I speak about this because I've actually had this on a few times where people have said, "John, can't you just share on love?" And that's what the the message is. I speak about love in general, love in the world how we actually desperately needing real true love so this message has got a few slants it speaks about love and how we need love but also that within our marriages we can reflect love wherever we go and whatever and everything we do so that, that that's quite a that's really really quite a nice one and then the last one is something you might want to put together yourselves where i say to you michael michelle pick out five four or five pillars that you want to build your marriage on and I'll literally custom make a, a message for you. It could be love, communication, fun, whatever it is. And, and that's also worked very, very well. And with that, it's very much a collaboration where, where we both literally work on a short little message together. So those are some of the ideas. And you might have something else that you found that you want me to share. And I'm open to that. After the message part we do the vows. Now with the vows, with the exchanging of vows, there's a couple of things you want to think of. Firstly, do you want to do personal vows or do you want to do traditional vows? So your traditional vows are the ones where um, I, Michael, take you, Michelle, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, you know, and it goes through that whole until death do us part. With that, with the traditional vows, you're going to repeat after me, line after line all right so that's quite simple it's powerful it's effective some people don't like the traditional ones and they prefer to say hey john we're actually going to do our own personal vows which is also great okay both work um with your personal vows there's a couple of things you want to you want to bear in mind firstly are you going to be saying them to each other now you don't have to or shall i read it on your behalf okay um and then when you're constructing them you want to think uh, to try and keep it to the same length. In other words, count your words and just give each other a word count. You know, you don't want the groom's vows to be three sentences and the bride's is half a page, etc. All right. With those, try and keep them the same length. It works. And then if you're going to say them to each other, I will hold the microphone for you and you say your vows to one another. This is an incredibly special and a powerful moment. I'm never going to rush this throughout the message. There's nothing I'm going to do to rush. And uh, I've seen many, many times both 
bride and groom in tears saying they're trying to finish their vows with one another. So Mr. Groom, please have some tissues ready. It does help, um, especially with the bride and all her makeup and uh, don't want you guys to be spoiling your looks. So that's some ideas with the exchanging of vows. Um, something different, I've also had a couple who said instead of saying our vows, we're actually going to listen to a song which sums up what we feel for each other. So there's a few things that you can do with your vows, um, some really, really cool ideas. Then with the exchanging of rings, what I'll then say is, could we have the rings, please? And whoever's bringing those rings would would give them directly to you. So to the to the groom, you would be holding your wife's rings. And to the bride, you would be holding your husband's ring or rings, okay? Whoever's bringing them, ask them to just give it directly to you. And they keep the box with them and they go sit down. And um, with your rings, I will ask you both to repeat five lines after me. And I'll, I'll literally say, Michael, starting with you. While you place Michelle's rings on her finger, please say the following to her. And it'll be, Michelle, with this ring, I commit myself to you as a token of my love for you and a symbol of the vows that I made to you today. It's those five lines. And then the bride would say exactly the same. So I keep it very slow, very special, very meaningful. And uh, that is also a very, very powerful moment in your, in your wedding ceremony. Now we moving on towards the, the final things that are going to be happening in your, in your ceremony. I love to end off with a poem or a reading or even a song. There's, a, there's so many things here that you can kind of wrap up and summarize your love, your devotion, your commitment for one another. I've got two poems or readings that really, really work well. And you're welcome to Google these and I, well, I could just share them with you. The one is called These Hands, a fantastic poem. And the other one is, is called I Choose You. Now, there's many others. There's, a, there's the well-known poem by Khalil Kabrim. Uh, there's, there's some poems from Shakespeare. There's a whole lot. But let me know how you want me to end this part. I do think a poem, a reading or a song is, a, is appropriate. If you're going to play a song, then I'll literally say, folks, we're going to listen to a song and I'm going to ask you to sit back and enjoy it. It sums up what Michael and Michelle feel for each other. OK, so after I've read that poem or listened to the song, I would literally say, Michael and Michelle, it gives me great joy to now pronounce you husband and wife. Michael, you may kiss your bride. OK, um, I always say make it a good one, please. No pics. You know, it's got to be at least five seconds long. <laughs> make it a good one. You've got some time to uh, to practice. Everyone's going to shout and cheer. And yeah, I'll, we'll celebrate that moment. Very, very, very special moment. Then I'll start to say, folks, just some last announcements and arrangements then I'll, I'll literally say what's going to happen next. And this is where you need to tell me what you want. Now, there's a few things we can do. We'll talk about the actual signing register, whether you want to first do the confetti and then the signing, or you want everyone to literally stand up and first do confetti and then sign the register. There's two options there. But I'll say we're going to be signing the register. I'm going to ask the two witnesses to please join us when we do that. Thereafter, we will... You let me know what you want, I should announce. Um, I could even say there will be some family photos. Those of you who are involved in that, you've already been informed or whatever it is. And what I do like to announce is to say your MC for the rest of the evening is Jack or James or whatever. All right. Now, this is important because people are going to have questions between where we are now and the, and, the, and the reception, you know, where's the change rooms, what about this, what about that? And if anyone has those questions, they can just ask your MC. And I will also suggest that when while we're signing the register and everyone is preparing themselves to congratulate you with confetti, that your MC is involved in positioning everyone, you know, like, so, so like a little tunnel or something to that effect. And so I'll say your MC for the rest of the evening is James. James, won't you please lift your hand? There we go. That's James. He's also going to show you where to stand just now where you can congratulate Michael and Michelle with the confetti or the rose petals. So those are the kind of things I would announce. But if there are specific things you want me to say, just let me know. 
All right. Then I will say, Michael and Michelle, please turn and face your friends and family. And they turn and everyone starts to smile and anticipates my announcement, which I then say, ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the newlywed Mr. and Mrs. James, for example, or whatever your surname will be. Um, and everyone will cheer. And at that moment, you start walking down the aisle. All right. We'll obviously liaise with your DJ and your sound guy. So when you start walking, you start, the, the music starts, and then we will go to sign the marriage register. All right. So there's a couple options here, obviously, with the actual signing. Remember, we need your two witnesses just to inform them, and obviously, they'll know who they are. Um, together with you guys, the bride and the groom, for you guys, there will be fingerprints that will be done. Three of each of you on three different pages. I will bring a little wipe. And don't worry, it doesn't leave any marks. I found myself a very, very cool little uh, thumb pad, which, which really, really works. So you'll be taking, with your left thumb, you'll be pressing it on, on three different pages. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be for both you, the bride and groom. The two witnesses will sign. And like I said earlier, think of, in terms of the actual place where you're signing, think of photos, think of lighting, think of something that's going to look nice. You know, you want to have that those photos uh, to be really, you know, scenic and, and appropriate and beautiful. While we're signing and just afterwards, I will have your marriage certificate prepared in an envelope with three or four certified copies in that envelope. I'll show you also, but I want to give this to you. My suggestion would be to one of the witnesses while they're there or to someone else that you entrust or maybe your, your wedding planner. All right. If you lose that marriage certificate, it's not the end of the world. You can get a reprint at any home affairs in South Africa. Right, so now we've signed, we've done the fingerprints, I've given the envelope. Then what I will literally do is I'll say to you both, guys, take a minute. We're going to get ready with the confetti and we're going to congratulate you. And literally, take a minute, all right? Just absorb the moment. Um, yeah, together with your MC, we will make sure everyone's uh, ready with the confetti. And then I will... As you guys come out, just depending on how loud or soft the music is, uh, sometimes I just let you guys come out, everyone knows. Sometimes the couple actually wants me to announce with the microphone, Mr. and Mrs. Or, your MC will probably have the microphone at that point, and he could introduce you nicely to everyone. And that's kind of the way I hand over at that point. There's a smooth transition. Um, so let your MC announce, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. James, or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we can plan that. Now, just towards the end of this video, I want to just chat a little bit about some optional extras and doing something different. Remember, right in the start, I said, you guys got one shot of really, really making this special, unique, memorable, uh, and a, a day, literally, that you'll remember for the rest of your life. I'm always keen and encouraging people to do something a little different. You want to think about your entrance. Are you going to do an, a song or the wedding march? They both have a different feel. Both work equally equally well. Uh, upon entering, uh, do you want to do something different? Do you want to come in together? I've had one bride come in with her, her dog because these people were dog lovers. You know, there's so many small things. I've had a bride come in alone because she just felt I want to come in alone. Um Think about that. Do you want to come in with both your parents or the whole family? I had one bride wanting to say to me, John, I've got, I've got my dad and my mom and my brother. I want to come in with all of them. You know, there's, so there's small things you do and can do. And trust me, if it looks a little weird and different, I'll explain it. I will say it in such a way that we will celebrate that this is different and unique and wonderful. So think about that. And then also what you want to do is think about the order. Now, I don't get this often, but I've had it a few times where literally the whole order has changed and where the, the, the couple literally want to start off with their rings and their vows. And then the whole wedding was about them declaring and showing their love for each other. So yeah, it actually worked incredibly well. It really, really did. But you don't have to. This is, again, just some ideas. Now, here's a couple of things that really, really work. There's, there's specifically two things that, that have actually been happening a lot lately, uh, and that is candle lighting and sand blending. Now, with your candle lighting, what happens there is we know a flame is the sign of life. So you would traditionally have two smaller or thin candles that both the groom and the bride, their parents light and give to them. 
And then both of you would be holding each of those two thinner or smaller candles and you then light one big candle together. Again, the song in the background works beautifully. And I'll explain that. I'll say, folks, we all know a, a flame is a sign of life. And as we light the two small candles, we're honoring and, thank, and thanking both families on both sides. And then we're celebrating as Michael and Michelle light the big candle together. We're celebrating this new life together in their marriage. So that's the one thing that really, really works well. The other one is what's called sand blending. And where this originated was, um, especially two people from different countries, they would literally bring two jars of sand, which looks different. And with those two jars of sand, they would then fill up a bigger jar, but little bit by little bit from each one. So then the bride, then the groom, then the bride, then the groom. And as they're both pouring a little bit at a time, taking turns, it creates these beautiful stripes. You can do just normal sand. Uh, and obviously we explained this before the time. I'll say, folks, you know, we're doing the sand blending because it represents two different lives coming together and it's impossible to separate the grains of sand again back to the original separate jars. And that's how important this bond of marriage is. Um, now, what you can do instead of sand is do uh, what's called bath salts. Um, I'll still announce it as a, as a sand blending ceremony, but you, for example, would have two different colors of bath salts, say a dark blue and a red or, or something like that. And same thing. However, now the, the jars would be filled with a bit more color, obviously, plus wherever you place it in your home, it's going to give off a beautiful, beautiful scent and a lovely smell. So those are two things that work well. Another thing I've done on a few occasions is what's called ha hand binding where I take a, a scarf, normally white or blue or, you know, whatever color you want. And back in the Jewish and the Celtic history, part of their culture at a wedding would be that the husband and wife would literally bind their hands. Now, I won't do it tight, but I'll literally just, you know, just kind of turn the, 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 um, the scarf around your hands while you're holding your flowers bride <laughs> and I'll say this while well, and we would do this just before the vows and I'll say the symbolism behind the hand binding is because your hands are an extension of who and what you are but also what you do and from now on both this bride and groom Michael and Michelle are going to be doing things together all right and then um, what about maybe someone singing a song as part of the ceremony part of the the wedding and then is there any other contributions? Is there someone who wants to read a poem or read a read a, a reading during the ceremony, anywhere in the beginning, in the message, after the vows, however you want? So there's so many small little things you can do, but I really hope that this video has given you something to think about, something to plan. And uh, yeah, feel free when we chat to raise some of these questions or comments or ideas that you have. And remember, nothing's off board. Uh, you can do what you want. At the end of the day, it's your wedding, and my goal is to help create an incredible ceremony for you guys that's, that's going to be stress-free, you're going to know what I'm going to be saying, and you know what's happening, but it creates an incredible memory. That's the goal, that's what I want to help do for you, and uh, yeah, hope this video helps, and I look forward to helping you.